Hello everybody, this is the Premiere Pro Creative Cloud 2018 tutorials. Finally doing some updates here on the, the new 2018 updates. Doing a full on tutorial for the whole software for Premiere Pro. Uh, we're going to start by opening up Premiere Pro here. And they've added a few things when you open up here to the uh, splash screen when you first load Premiere. Uh, they've got the regular work thing that we're going to go through and this little learn tab right here. But you don't need this stuff because I'm going to be teaching you. I'm just kidding. But if you go into here, you can actually look up some of the video tutorials they'll have. This is really helpful when they come up with major updates and you can go in here and watch the little video clips to see some of the changes they made and they go through the tutorials on those things. So that's actually kind of helpful. I'm going to click on work here and we're going to go in here and get started. Some things that you see right in here is kind of three basic ways to get started here is you've got your recent files, things you've been working on, you've got project files that you've been working on. If you hit new project, you can start a new project. I've got some uh, setup episodes coming up here where we're going to show you how to start a new project and uh, choose a hard drive and then open project. If you click on that, it will open up a uh, viewer. And by the way, what I'm showing here works for both Windows and Mac if you're working on either one of those. Uh, I work on both computers depending on what I'm doing. so. Uh, I will be talking about shortcuts for both Windows and Macintosh. I'm going to cancel that and go back to my splash screen. And they've got a couple little options up here as well where you can sort. If you've got a whole bunch of projects you've been working on, you can choose how to sort these by name and alphabetical order, the last open, the most recent uh, size and kind of files. So there's just a bunch of different ways of rearranging these up here. I pretty much leave it on last open and I can find the ones that I'm looking for. And you have a filter here. You can type in the names for project and search for them as well. Some of the basics there. And down here you've got your team project area. Uh, if you're going to be doing team projects, this is something you work on if you're doing a collabor collaborative work where you have somebody doing your effects and after effects and you have multiple people opening up your Premiere project files. Uh, this is really helpful, but you have to, if you click on this, you'll notice, you'll notice it tells you you have to have the Enterprise Edition. And in order to get the Enterprise Edition, you have to contact Adobe and arrange the purchase for the Enterprise Edition. Otherwise, you're just going to be using this kind of as a single user. If you're using it with multiple people, you can just share project files. So, But this is a really nice way to go if you have the Inter Enterprise Edition and you're working in a studio environment. A couple other things right here. I'm going to show you some preferences. It shows you how to back up your files to the Creative Cloud. If you click on that, it brings up a bunch of projects that you've been working on uh, that it saves to the Creative Cloud. It automatically uploads these to the Creative Cloud that you can access these and does a backup of them. If you ever have a project file go missing, you can go to the Creative Cloud files and this is reading the Creative Cloud. This is reading their server of all the backups that you've made. My next thing down here is sync settings. Since you have a Creative Cloud account, uh, if you make any changes in your preferences, in shortcuts, in workspace layouts, you can hit sync settings now and it will save those settings that you've created to your account. That way if you start on another computer, you can basically sync your settings down to the computer that you're working on and it will have the same shortcuts and workspace layouts that you normally use. So if you make any changes, you can just hit sync settings now and it will upload those settings to the Creative Cloud. I'm going to move down here. I'm going to open up a project. If you're moving from 2017 to 2018 or an earlier, even an earlier version, I'm going to go to one of my project files here and find a project. And I'm going to double click on this. This one was saved in 2017. So I'm going to double click on this project file here and open this project. It'll open this window here. If you've got an earlier version of a project, usually when they do the major updates, it will have you resave your project, but in the latest version because it's got so many changes that they've just eventually have to make a whole new Premiere Pro build that will require you to resave your project as the updated file. And no, notice it puts a little hyphen and a one after this. My project name, which is called Flying, but it's got this underscore one here. And uh, if you don't want to name it like that, if you want to name it the original, I kind of, I usually do this little thing. I just backspace a couple times, hit space, and type in 2018. So I know this was updated to 2018. That way you get to retain your original project file as well. If you need to access that for some reason, it's always there. You can browse and put it in a different location. I'm going to keep it in my same location and hit OK. OK, and now that our project is opened, uh, one thing I kind of want to point out here is how a project file works. I'm going to minimize my window here and kind of show you. Uh, this is my folder that I've got all my project and media in. Uh, a couple things we've got here is if I double click on this uh, little external project file here, this is where I've got my media right there got all my media in there and also I've got these project files right here uh, the earlier version from 2017 and the 2018 version 
Now, notice the file size on these project files. This is like 41 kilobytes. It's very, very small. As you like do a lot of editing, this will get larger and larger, maybe up to 2 or 3 meg at the most. And that 2 or 3 megabytes, keep in mind that that is a very small uh, project file, which means that basically these project files do not contain the media that you are working with here. If you send somebody a project file, it's not going to contain the media. It's a very small project file. All this project file does is references the uh, media that you have here. It does not save that media to your project file. Your project file just tells that media how to act. So if you send a project file to somebody, they are not going to be able to open it up. It'll open it up and say that your all your media is, is uh, offline. Okay, so a couple different things I want to cover in this beginning episode here. As we go up to Edit and move down to Preferences, we're going to cover the Preference panel. One other thing I want to cover is File and project settings. These are two kind of general setup features that uh, you need to set up before you start working in Premiere Pro. I'm going to go into, uh, under Edit and go to Preferences and we're going to click on General here and it will open up this window. Everything you saw under Edit and Preferences shows up right here. You can just click down on these and go through these various different uh, preferences that you have in Premiere Pro. But we're going to go through some of the key preferences here for setting up your system so you're able to just start editing. So for the most part, the general tab is one that you can kind of go through and not really make any changes. The one change that they have made in 2018 is this little double click option right here. It used to be that you had to hold down Alt and double click on a folder or what they call a bin and it would open it up in a new tab instead of a free floating window. We will eventually get into that, but right now it's kind of it's a little bit more convenient. I'm kind of glad they fixed this where you can just double click on a folder or a bin and it will open it up in a new tab instead of a free floating window and we will cover that in a future episode. The next one is appearance. Appearance is a nice little customization if you need to make your screen brighter or darker and you also have this highlight color where you can make that darker or lighter as well. It's just any highlights with surrounding text that you can uh, you can change that. I usually leave all these things on default and the focus indicator is when you click on something that opens up a little box where you can type in text, you can change the how dark or light that appears as well. But I usually leave these on all default. This is so this is one you can you can usually skip unless you want to customize that. In the audio tab, some of the important things I want to cover is play audio while scrubbing here. I usually have this check mark. If you don't hear audio, let me uncheck this and show you what happens as we play through footage here. I've got some audio here, and as we grab this and we move through it like this, you will you will hear nothing. If I press play, spacebar you hear the audio. So if we go under Edit, Preferences, and Audio, and check mark that, what's really nice about this is when you hit OK, and you move your playhead, you grab this, and this is called scrubbing. It's not when you're playing, but when you grab this playhead and you drag it back and forth, this is called scrubbing. And right there we can hear the audio as you're scrubbing through it. I like to have that active so you can kind of hear the audio as you're moving through it. And it also does this by the frame. If I move one frame at a time by hitting the arrows left and right keys, you can hear the audio scrubbing there. And that's probably the most important thing under audio. If you go under audio hardware, this here will decide what speakers or what audio source to play this to. If you have an interface device that plugs in via USB or FireWire or something like that, you can plug that in and you can choose your output. Right here I'm plugged into a an HD television and I can choose to play the audio through my HD television or through my regular speaker's headphones jack. Like I said, if you have an interface device, uh, you can choose to play out your interface device like a Blackmagic or a Motu or a anything else like that. As you go under Auto Save, Auto Save is very important. You want Premiere to automatically save your projects. This doesn't mean it will save over your original project, it will do a backup. It'll do what's called an autosave and there's a folder where it saves these autosaves. Now I like to put my automatically save every here. I like every about like two or three minutes. I'll put two minutes. I want it to do a backup file because when I'm really getting into the editing mode, like 15 minutes of work is a lot of work. So I like to put it about at two minutes and in case this crashes on a PC or a Mac. And yes, this will crash on a Mac. I've had it crash on a Mac before then I will have it save every two minutes and we'll do a backup file there and then that way you will only have lost two minutes. Maximum project versions, I like to put this at 99. I don't know why 99, I just like to pump it up so you have multiple multiple versions saved. So if you need to go back, you can look at these multiple project versions. If you did something that you really screwed up really badly, you can go back and look about two or three versions and find the version that has the project file that was before your big screw up. 
I like to have this check marked as well. Save backup project to Creative Cloud. This does an extra backup. It does it on your computer and it also does it to the Creative Cloud as well. So it's kind of saving it in a couple different locations. There's kind of a mantra that says that if you don't have three versions of your project, it doesn't exist. So make sure you back up your project files in different areas as well as your media. As we go under capture here, capture is something that's almost obsolete. It's not obsolete in the sense that if you have a bunch of old tapes and you're capturing things from DV and HDV and other different types of media, then this is still not obsolete. But uh, for the most part with uh, solid state media, this is fairly obsolete. But I'm glad that they keep this here in case you ever need to go back and capture old tapes. Collaboration deals mainly with team projects. We're not going to cover this right now. If you go into control surface, if you have anything like a tangent element board, you can use the, you can set up the tangent element element board to control Premiere Pro. We'll go into device control. <clears throat> Once again, this is for capturing. If you're capturing from a DV or an HDV device, you can go in here and change that. So if you have some old old tapes that you're capturing, then you can go into here and change the settings for this. But once again, this is kind of antiquated as well. Graphics, you will usually not have to change any settings in here unless your language is appearing with the wrong text engine. And under labels, you will see all these different colors that you have. When you start naming media and changing the style of media, you're going to be able to change them specific colors. They have some defaults over here for things like video clips and still clips and audio and sequences they put into, into different colors, and you can change those if you need to. Under media, you can kind of leave all these things alone here. I mean, there, there are little settings that you can change, but the one that I like to change is this one that says create folder for imported project. If you check mark that when you import a project file, if you're working on a certain project and you want to import somebody else's project file into your project, it will create a folder and dump all their footage and everything into that imported project file. And it is it, and it makes it really easy to keep track of. Under media cache, this is something that uh, will create waveform audio files and a whole bunch of other different things. Uh, just all the, the miscellaneous files that it needs to, for, for organization and other things it needs to keep track of. You can choose one of two things here. You can keep it on your C drive. This, this is going to keep it on your computer hard drive and save all those files under these. It just is, it is a default folder. If you want to, you can hit browse and per project you can browse and put these under a specific folder. Uh, if you're working on an external hard drive, this is kind of convenient to change these things so when you move to a different computer, it doesn't have to regenerate all of your audio waveforms, which will save you some time. So you can change those if you wish. Otherwise, if you're just working on a single, single computer, I recommend keeping these the same. I recommend keeping these as the default. Under memory, you have some options here to change how much RAM can be used for Premiere Pro specifically. It'll show your installed RAM. I've got like 16 gigabytes of RAM. And Premiere Pro is going to use up to about 11 gigabytes of RAM. And you can change this just by clicking on here and changing the amount of RAM that you'll want to use for Premiere or remaining apps on your computer. Under playback, one of the more important options is your external monitors here. Right now I've got a secondary monitor. And what this does is if you check mark one of these here, if you know which one is your monitor one and your monitor two, if you check mark and hit OK, it will play whatever you have in your program monitor or in your source monitor full screen to your secondary monitor, which is kind of nice because you have a full screen preview of the video that is playing. Under sync settings, you can tell what to sync under your account, preferences, workspaces, keyboard shortcuts. By default, it has every one of these check marked and it has unchecked marked the automatically clear settings upon application quit, which is what I prefer. Go under timeline. The next episode coming up, I will have specifically the timeback playback auto scrolling here. This is something kind of important, but just uh, requires a little bit more time to explain. A couple things I uncheck in here is first of all, at playback end, return to the beginning when restarting playback. I kind of hate that when you reach the end of your timeline and you hit your spacebar to play, it goes back to the beginning of your timeline and starts playing from the beginning and sometimes it loses your place, which I hate. So I uncheck that and I also uncheck play work area after rendering and previews. If you're adding effects to your clip and it has to render it in order to play it back, which we will get into and explain, uh, once you, it renders, it automatically starts playing. If you walk away from your computer while it's rendering, uh, it'll just start playing when it finish, finishes rendering. So I uncheck those two things and trim. I leave these things alone as well. We'll be getting in future episodes. We will be getting into trimming and talking about some shortcuts used for trimming. You don't really have to change anything in here if you're just using the shortcuts on your keyboard. So with that, I'm going to hit OK and I've got my preferences all set up. Now a different type of uh, preferences here. I go under File and this is for the project here. This is not a general Premiere setup. This is a project settings. This is specific to the project that you're working on. 
So I'm going to go under Project Settings, I'm going to go under General, and it will bring up those three tabs you just saw there, General, Scratch Disks, and Ingest Settings. So under the General tab here, first of all, very important right here is the Video Rendering and Playback. If you look over at this and it is on Software Only, you're going to have very slow playback, and if especially if you do some effects on your clip, it's going to slow your system down incredibly. So what this here does is uses your GPU. This is your graphics processing unit, which is basically your graphics card. And uh, it might show something different from Mac here, depending on the type of video card that you have. But what's really important is make sure that your graphics card drivers is updated. If this is grayed out and it's on software only, that's because your graphics card needs to have the drivers updated. And if you're on a PC, I recommend going downloading the GeForce Experience app and installing that and then it will automatically update your drivers. Just go into the into the app and you can uh, choose to update your drivers to the latest drivers. And then you'll have to restart Premiere and this will likely show up. On the Mac, the Mac uh, pretty much keeps your graphic drivers installed with all the latest updates so it's usually not much of an issue. But make sure this is, this is not grayed out and it's not on the software only because it's going to slow you down significantly. Depending on the project you're working on, down here your default is going to be display format time code. It's going to be pretty much showing time code. You can do frames and 35 millimeter and 16 millimeter feet and frames if you're working with old film that's been transferred. But besides that, I would just keep this on time code. And if you're editing audio, you can tell it to show milliseconds. If you're editing audio specifically, you can zoom up. If you're on audio samples, basically what that's going to do is show it down to the video frame. It's basically showing it frame by frame on the video. And if you're shooting like anywhere from 24 to 60 frames per second, uh, that's how you're going to be able to edit your audio. Otherwise, if you need to get down to the milliseconds, the milliseconds is where you really can edit your audio. Uh, for anybody that's doing audio mixing, you'll kind of get understand that. But uh, for most, the most part, you can keep it on audio samples. Scratch Disk is going to be where you save things like captured video if you're capturing things from tape, captured audio if you're capturing thing from, things from tape as well. But when you render video files here, you can change the location that it is saving these different types of media here. Your auto saves, your audio previews, your video previews for saving video effects and audio effects. Uh, by default, this is going to be same as project, which will put it in the same folder where your project file is. And this will actually create a folder inside of your folder that you saved it in that is named Video Previews, Audio Previews, and Auto Save. And this is where it auto saves your project files. That 99, it will save up to 99 project files in this location. In just settings, I'm going to do a separate tutorial on. This is basically where you can take something like a DSLR or a solid state solid state drive that you have shut your media on, and you can tell it to ingest this. Basically, what you can plug it in, you can import it right off of the solid state drive, and it will start transferring it to a folder of your choice. But that way, you can start editing it immediately. I am going to have a separate tutorial on this in the future. A couple of other things that you have in here are also creating proxies. If you're doing really high quality media and your computer is bogging down, you can create proxies and you can edit your project with smaller files and then reconnect them to the higher quality media later on. Those are basically the setup options to get started in Premiere Pro. I'm putting all of my project files that I'm doing for Premiere Pro inside of a playlist. If you go to youtube.com slash chinfat, that is my channel name, and hit enter, it will take you to my channel. Then to view the Premiere Pro uh, 2018 tutorials, you can go to Playlists, then you can click on my Premiere Pro CC 2018 playlist, and you will see a list of all the tutorials that I have to offer for 2018. With that, in the next episode, I'm going to be covering the page scroll versus different types of scroll in your timeline. And if you have any questions, please post them, and we will see you in the next episode. Thank you.